a little bit dark, but it is um, 20 past nine, and um, I'm heading over to Wales. Uh, I haven't been in the land of the gods uh, this week at all, really, and um, now we're heading over to North Wales, and I'm going to meet my friend David. Uh, David and I are going to uh, night nav up to a, uh, a bothy, which I pronounce Doolin, D-U-L-Y-N. Um, the theme for this video is going to be me mispronouncing Welsh names, so that'll be entertaining. And then at the bothy, earlier on today, my friend Nigel um, has already made his way up there, so he's going to be there. And then we're going to enjoy three nights wild camping in Wales. Uh, I've not done any uh, wild camping in Wales to date, so um, stay tuned and see how I got on. the Bothy. Um, David and myself set off from the car park at 9 o'clock and we made our way up. Uh, it wasn't totally dark at 9 and um, it was foggy though. Uh, we spent, I was predominantly map reading and um, I got disorientated to where I was. I wasn't walking on a bearing. Um, I'd misread features and uh, it got to a point at about 11 o'clock where we decided to return back to the cars in defeat. Then um, we bumped into uh, three fellow uh, mountaineers and um, they were also coming to this buffy. So I joined them and uh, David returned to the car. Now David had about 10 or 15 minute walk back to the car. That's literally how far we'd got. Um, I'll take you around the outside of the buffy. There's a little... Uh, valley there so just be careful that if you come out at night and Right, these are my heroes. Um, map in hand, you can't count, can you? <laughs> <laughs> you can't count your paces, but um, I, I followed these guys up and uh, we worked as a team quite a lot doing the navigation. Um, I obviously didn't have the skills to get up here on my own, but without these guys, I wouldn't have got here. So thank you very much. Nice and uh, you're going up to Glidders, is it? Uh, we're going to start with Volvarat and then do the 3000 north to say. Right, okay. So, yeah, we've got a few days walking to go. <laughs> In wet boats. In wet boats. In wet boats. Yeah. 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 Hoping they'll dry. Good luck. Nice to meet you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, the first part of my uh, pronunciation uh, sketch, I think they call this Beulin Buffy. Beulin, beg your pardon. Yep, told you it was going to be rubbish. So there's quite a few uh, mattresses and there's one bed, camp bed that's left there. A couple of empty uh, containers to get your water from the stream just outside. OS map, very handy. Um, could be useful to somebody, but if not, it could just be absolute junk. Fire uh, without the glass screen at the front. Um, is there any fuel, Nigel? No. And then there's a, a Nigel. Um, he got here, what time? Was it still light, wasn't it? Yeah, about half six-ish. Half six. Right, six, um, six. But you didn't find a path up, did you? No, we didn't find any paths. We found styles, but not paths. Yeah. Um, and there it is. Land of the Gods. 
So we've cleared away, we lost people out of here, and um, it was great. We're going to sign the book and make our way. Away. Right, so I was um, scrambling. I don't know if that was a scramble, but we climbed straight up. There's no path, so that's what we did. Um, the ground has levelled out considerably. There's no hills. We know the uh, the tarn, uh, which the Bothy's named after, uh, is just over there. So you can see the visibility that we've got. What would you say? 20, 30 metres? 30 metres and we're walking on a bearing we've set uh, we've set the compass and we're pointing it uh, in a direction that we're confident we're going to go now this is where your pacing comes in and I aren't trying to teach you stuff but I learned this last night from those um, those three superheroes um, so we we can gauge on the map from where the tarn is to where the path that we're heading for is and we can count our paces um, so that we don't overshoot it. And if we do overshoot it, we're not gonna overshoot it by an hour. Um, and it's important, it's really important to, it's an important skill to learn. I didn't know it and I hadn't used it a great deal until last night. Like, it's like Pythagoras, you taught it, but you know, when do you ever really use it? Well, I'm an engineer, but that's by the by. Um, it, it, you have to really be on the game, don't you? In this okay. terrain, you could be in trouble quickly. You, you, you can't you can't relax you've got because to be on it you've got to be on your map you've got to be on your compass all yeah. the time haven't you yeah counting your paces you, yeah. it's in this terrain with this weather we've got no visible reference points for us yeah. so that's it it's compass work paces that's hand all. railing and hand railing that's, that's a new term got. i learnt last night hand railing so you basically get to a fence and you walk along the fence, be it on your left or on your right, and that is called hand railing. And you hand rail upon it until it either reaches a stile or a stream. And then you can look on your map and you can see exactly where you are. Set another bearing and repeat. Go hand rail the river. And it goes straight to the hand rail the river, yeah. <laughs> hand rail the river that you could quite easily walk straight past the boffy. But mm -hmm. nature, wonderfully, has put some really tricky terrain by the side of the river just underneath the boffy which is going to force you up and i actually walked into the boffy bang last night right let's go left it on no um snacking as usual nigel was snacking before uh lisa has made a fruit leather mm. so that's basically that's strawberries really dry house nice. uh, strawberries blitzed in a blender Laid out on a dehydrator, and um, they're good, aren't they? Nice work, Lise. Thank you. Yeah, packed with sugar, that. Mm, just job. No. You're leaping at me. No. It's on. Uh, Nigel, Nigel on the Ennerdale camp uh, showed me this. He's, he carries it, and you carried this uh, in the summer months um, for this exact reason. So I'll show you where and why how the platypus just simply won't, you can't top it right the way up. It's only going to get to a certain point and then, so you can't fill it up. So where the bottle comes in, you can just top the platypus up. And I used it with, uh, with Lisa on uh, our Old Water half round. And it's, it's brilliant. It's so simple. It's so simple and I've got to talk to this. So do I need to carry extra water? Because we're going up higher and the water's going to be even less. I can fill this up, dump some in the, the bottle, fill that up. Yeah, loads of water. Brilliant, that nice. Thank you for that. Uh, with us walking on um, a bearing, uh, 
just trying to hit a path now we haven't seen a clear path at all so far um, and out the corner of my eye from just over here I saw that now we know that there's only one one path that's up this way so we're quite happy that look there's just no path no path at all no visible path we haven't, I haven't seen a path yet I've seen styles but I haven't seen a path am I doing something wrong in Wales or what do I need to write a strongly worded letter of complaint to the uh, Ordnance Survey? We're nowhere near Snowden. Yeah, we're nowhere near Snowden. Yeah, that's it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, they don't bother, they don't tend to them, do they? Right, let's go. We're at um, 900 metres. Uh, this is the worst wind and visibility that we've had all day. Uh, we think like cairns guiding people to the uh, the path we're not 100% sure on that um, so coming up to just seeing through the mist the visibility is obviously poor um, and we've seen a fence so now we're going to look at a, a method be it a style or something to pass it This is lit. What? Well, this is about uh, two, two seconds after the last clip, and we've turned to get out of the wind to get our bearings, so to speak. Yeah. And we've walked across this quite predominant path, and at some point we must have crossed it. At some point. So, is there a style up here then? Yeah, we'll head off in this direction. We still want to head westerly. So. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Why we want to go? Uh, Nigel fired up the uh, the GPS as we we found this predominant path and we think if we were heading in that direction or we know yeah, if we're heading north. in that direction that that's north and that is the wrong direction so if we hadn't stopped and checked or got a compass out we could have wasted a lot of time there uh, gone on a, uh, a little adventure so we're heading Okay, uh, we're at 926 metres on the summit of uh, Khan Ed Gwellilian, formerly Khan Ed Yusha. So um, that's where exactly we are, and we're heading on to uh, that one there, Falgrash. Falgrash? Yeah. Falgrash, there you go. Where's and that's, that's at 976 yeah, metres. An yeah, so there's an emergency shelter there where we're going to. Sit down, uh, have a brew, and have a well-earned sandwich. Yeah. And here's what we're looking at. Not very much. Shatter Steve. Well, yeah, when we leave. Basically, don't plan on wild camping in here. It's supposed to be meant for uh, emergencies. <laughs> <laughs> 